This is uh, the build log of my uh, capacitance leakage tester project, which uh, I designed and uh, am now ready to put together and try out and get into use. The reason for this is that I do the radio restorations and I need to uh, measure capacitance leakage on occasion and also to reform some electrolytic capacitors. Now this is actually the final video of a series of videos uh, in which I design this and I go through the actual design of the schematic ad nauseum. So I decided to put this one in first as opposed to last. For all of you who are interested in this kind of uh, tester and uh, interested in building one yourself, but who do not want to go through all the, the uh, theory that comes into getting this thing designed. If you're interested, the other videos are in linked below and will be posted immediately after this one. So anyway, have fun. The idea is that I, in the radio restoration, come across a lot of leaky capacitors. I generally just swap them all out. I would like to know that I'm swapping out caps that need to be swapped out, and therefore the leakage tester comes in handy. Now, I have to warn you two things. One, this thing uses high voltages, so the usual disclaimer applies. If you play around with this, you do so at your own risk. Do not mess around if you don't know what you're doing, because this can kill you. The second thing is, if you're looking for a cheap capacitance leakage tester, this is not it. Just uh, between the three main components, transformer and, uh, and the two meters, you've probably spent enough to go ahead and buy one of the old ICOs or Heathkit or Knight capacitance leakage testers. Do a bit of uh, renovation on it, restoration on it, and you've got a better tester than you probably need. Because I like building these myself, I went ahead and did it my way, which once again can be dangerous and is not cheap. Um, so here goes. First of all, schematic is here. And uh, as I said, you can actually get full details on how I came up with this schematic in the previous uh, three videos. It's a bit long winded, can be quite boring, but it's up to you. So this is the schematic we're going to build. And the three things I had already were the power transformer. This is a 220 to 220 or 240 to 240 transformer, 30 milliamps. It's got a, a heater um, supply as well. This is meant for a small preamp, which I never got to build, but this came in useful. And the other two main components are the meters. A voltmeter, which reads up to 400 volt DC, and a microammeter reading 100 microamps which I'll be using and uh, which has in the schematic some range switching to allow for 0 to 100 microamps, 0 to 1 milliamp, 0 to 10 milliamps and 0 to 100 milliamps. Right, so let's get started. The first stage is the case. This is the part that actually gave me the most work because I had to drill it out, measure it out. I drew out the front measured it out and then I had to do a hell of a lot of filing, which can be quite uh, tiresome at home. If you have machinery, I'm sure it's a lot easier. But these things are um, really my version of a, an ideal uh, box, because what I do is I buy these aluminum. Uh, these things come like that. They're a rectangular bar or strip, whatever you want to call it in huge lengths. I normally get them to cut it to the sizes that I want. This is a slightly smaller version than the one you've seen down there. I then get them to cut off these two sections and I end up with a usable enclosure. I then use either wood or plexiglass or something on the side, even aluminum on the side, and I've got myself my enclosure. Now these come out very, very cheap. I normally buy, you know, one or two meters and get them to cut it to the sizes that I want. And then I leave them lying around and occasionally I have reason to use it. In this particular case, I needed a deeper enclosure. So two of these come together like that. These little holes then receive a nut and bolt. And this ends up being the enclosure. This one's been sprayed and drilled and is ready for me to start mounting the components, which is what I'm going to do now. Start with the meters and go from there.
Now the circuit that I showed you, or rather the components that uh, make up the circuit, were actually, I built them up on this little board. It's one of those prototype boards that you get everywhere. I could have made a PC board, but I just thought it wasn't worth it. It was simple enough. And um, I have these connectors for the potentiometer. There is another two here, which is the mains in. And these two here are the V plus out, so ground and positive voltage. Here's the MOSFET. The pot then adjusts the voltage on the MOSFET output, depending on its position. There is a 100K resistor from the bottom of the pot to ground, so that I'm not actually getting zero volts minimum. It's uh, in the order of 30 volts minimum. I think it's uh, you know, one eleventh of whatever the input voltage is or the output rectified from the transformer. So I don't really need the low end of the voltages uh, to measure these leakages. I want uh, from 30 volts up and also it also helps to remove the uh, 330 something volts off this uh, potentiometer. I have the potentiometer grounded or rather earthed to the case. The case will be connected to uh, mains ground, although the zero volts here will not. It'll be floating. Okay, so this thing has been built. There's a washer. This is one of those insulator um, heat dissipation washers on the back of the MOSFET so that it actually separates the MOSFET from the case. And this is then fitted in the back of the, of the case down here. I'm going to connect it in and we'll take it then one step further. So this is where we've got so far. We have the meters screwed in. The two output jacks are screwed in. The on off switch is there. Everything seems fine so far. On the back section, we have the transformer wired in. I've got the power cable coming in there. It's supported with this grommet, which is a very tight fitting grommet. So I'm not too worried about that coming loose. I didn't bother with putting in a, a IEC plug here because it just makes this whole thing a lot more complicated. So I left it like that. That's the fuse holder. And um, the board is over there. This is the potentiometer for the voltage control. And now I have to start wiring things in. Most of the wiring is done, with the exception of the ammeter range switch. So what I have done so far is I've connected the board, the regulator board, the uh, transformers connected in through the fuse and to the switch on the front there. There's still no indicator LED in place. The uh, six volt wire, um, output from the transformer is just insulated and wound around here just to stay out of the way. And what I've done now is I've actually got everything ready to do a test by connecting the output, the positive and negative, just to the voltmeter. Okay, 
So all I need to do now is I need to get a need to get a plug on here and I think we're ready for testing. Well, this is the moment of truth. I have left the on off switch on. And at the moment, what I have connected is the voltmeter to the output. So what we really have is there's our V plus and ground. So effectively, that's where I've connected the voltmeter, which, as you can see, is exactly where that's exactly what it's doing. It's measuring V plus coming in to ground. So none of this is connected. Right. So all I want to do is to test whether the varying voltage is working and I'll be able to test that across the, uh, the DC voltmeter. So I have switched this on here and I'm going to activate it via the uh, dim light tester by switching it on. I've got the dim light tester active. I've got only one lamp on. So the 40 watt bulb is is active. It will give us the best protection. The rest is off and make sure this is at a minimum. Let's see what we get. OK. OK. All right. So what I've got here is very little current draw. As you can see, the lamp uh, is off. The actual voltage coming out is very close to 235, 236, which is what I get over here. Zero current. It's, this is actually the decimal point has moved one across, so it's not measurable. And I have got on this meter 30 volts DC. Now, let's, let's go for it. Yes, there we go, 100 volts DC. Two hundred volts DC. I'm not quite sure what the maximum is in this one. I thought it was three thirty eight, but we'll see. There's three hundred. Nothing popped yet. I'm almost afraid to to mention it. Okay. Let's go to maximum. And there's max. All right. What is our maximum? Our maximum is 340 volts. Okay, 340. Let's see if it reacts well going down. Yep, 200, 3, 2. What happens if I zap? Oh yeah, all right. It's very responsive. I was actually a bit worried because there is no current draw on the MOSFET and I wondered whether it would react with no current draw, but it does. And it actually reacts pretty fast. So because there is no there is no capacitor charging on the output, it's actually very, very fast. Brilliant. Bloody hell, brilliant. Okay, so far so good. The variable voltage section of this project is working as planned. Up to 340 volts. There we go. Let me try to switch it off. Yep. And that's coming off slowly because, there we go, this was high. And this was the uh, indication of the capacitors discharging. Brilliant. On, 30 volts. Go up. Off. And there's the discharging capacitors. On the primary side, rather, on the um, up circuit from the, J from the MOSFET. So before the MOSFET is what you're getting discharging here. Okay, so that part works as designed. Brilliant. 
onwards to the the ammeter, uh, the micrometer section, and we are nearly there. This is the selector switch for the various bands. Um, as mentioned, I used some fixed resistors over here, and then across them, I used a trimmer cat trimmer pot to adjust to the exact um, resistance that I needed which is also mentioned in the uh, in the design videos that uh, proceed or rather succeed this one in this case. So what we have here is we have the V plus coming in here. We have the connection to the uh, to the capacitor. This is the output effectively uh, that goes over there. This goes to the cap and this guy is the meter. So the positive and the negative of the micro ammeter. So V plus comes in, V plus goes out, and we have the meter effectively in series with another resistor in here, uh, depending on which range we've got it on. This switch is pretty definitive. It's not a soft switch, which we don't want. Now, what I need to do is, on this position, I need that uh, 47 ohm or 47K uh, resistor to ground over there. So I need to connect that resistor to that last uh, uh, position of the switch, and I need to connect that to ground. So I need to put that in. I haven't soldered it in here because I need to see which ground I'm going to use. I can use the ground on the voltmeter. I'm using a common ground, which is I've basically chosen the um, the negative connection of the voltmeter as a sort of star ground just to make it easier. So that's the next stage. By the time I get back, we should have this whole thing in place. Fingers crossed. All right, time for the moment of truth. Time to test this thing. What I've done here for the purposes of testing is that um, I put the DMM across the output. So because the cap is connected to this output, these are the two uh, connectors for the cap itself, ground and the positive, we actually have the DMM reading the actual voltage across the capacitor. This one's reading the voltage supplied by the variable voltage regulator. Uh, most of the time, in most of the positions, they'll be the same. But in the last position, when I put this uh, the knob on discharge, when that knob goes to discharge in the last position, or rather the first position, um, that thing will be reading the voltage being supplied, and that thing there will read the actual voltage across the capacitor. So because this position, this last position, or first position, discharges the cap through that 47k resistor, we should see that go down to zero. The speed at which it goes down depends on the size of the capacitor so and the capacity that it has. So let's start with, let's put it on. And we have, as expected, we have 27, 26 volts over there. We have zero volts across the capacitor because this is in the off for discharge position. So we'll start by putting in say this capacitor this one is um, an Eero these are notoriously leaky but we'll see I don't know what these capacitors are like at the moment I haven't tested them yet this is a 125 volt DC cap so we'll put that in and see where we go this is no polarity because it's a non-polarized cap same does not apply if you're using a you're testing a, an electrolytic so at the moment we have Nothing across there, it's still shorter to ground. And we're going to move it into the on and 100 milliamp range. So when I put that on there, you saw a slight flicker there. That was the cap charging. It's still at 28 volts, um, but it's not leaking on the 100 milliamp range. OK, so we'll put the voltage up to the 125. Keep an eye on the ammeter the 100 milliamp meter at this in this range and we up it to 
about 120 or so. There's 100. One other thing I notice is that if I put this exactly on 100, that's exactly on 100. Because of parallax, I had to move my face this way. That's 99.7. So this thing is pretty accurate compared to my DMM. I still see no leakage on the 100 milliamp range, but I'll take it up to 120. That's close enough. 120, 100 milliamp range, no leakage. Let's see what happens when I put it on the 10 milliamp range. Ah, okay. I can see 0 0.5, 0 0.6 milliamps of leakage on there at 120 volts. Pretty close to its uh, limit, but not quite there yet. But what I'm going to do, because it's less than one milliamp, I know I can go up one more range. This is the one milliamp range. And there it is, 0 0.6 milliamps of leakage. This capacitor is dead. Okay. So this one's been tested. I go back through the ranges. No danger because I'm going to higher reading ranges, 10 milliamp, 100 milliamp, and then off. And you see that this charges to zero. That voltage stays there because I haven't dropped it here yet. So I'll do that ready for the next test. So this capacitor is now discharged and it's very leaky. So this one's dead. Let's try this one. This one is a 500 volt one. It's also a Sava. See how we fare on this guy. So again, voltage is at a minimum. I put it on. I've got a bit of a flicker there. It's a bigger cap, so it took a bit of charge. And now I'm going to up the voltage. This one was 500 volts, so I can actually take this to the max and keep an eye on the ammeter. 100 and something, 150, 200. I should do this quite slowly because it could actually just short out. There's 250 or so. 300. Still no reading on the meter or visible reading on the meter. And there's the maximum, 330 volts. Now, this is a 500, milli, uh, 500 volt uh, capacitor, so I'm not reading it at its, uh, at its limit. But for my purposes, because my radios don't go over 300 volts, 310, 320 or so maximum, this would be perfectly fine for my purposes. Now, I have no leakage on the 100 milliamp range. Let's see what happens when I go to the 10 milliamp range. Oh dear. Right, that's not much, but it's there. Let's take it to the 1 milliamp range. So I've got 0.3 milliamps of leakage on there. That is definitely leaking. Uh, 0.3 milliamps is far too high. So this cap is also dead. Um, right, let me go back. And then when we short it, that should go down to ground. And there we go, discharging pretty fast. That'd be safe to, to handle now. So I take my voltage back down just so that I don't have any mishaps. If I suddenly put on a cap that's not rated for 500 volts or for 330 in this case, let's try this guy. Now this one here is a thousand volt 0.047 microfarad. It's a Wima. I do recall these are pretty good quality. Let's see if they live up to their reputation. This shouldn't be leaky at uh, 330 volts, but we'll see. So voltage is at a minimum. I'm going to put it up, switch it on. 28 volts, 100 milliamp range, 1000 volt cap. I could take this all the way up and it shouldn't be a problem, but I'll do it fairly slowly anyway. I still read no leakage on that range. 335 volts. Okay, let's take it to the 10 milliamp range. No leakage, no measurable leakage on 10 milliamps. 1 milliamps, there's a little bit of leakage. Now let's take it to 100 microamps. Right, so we have 32 or so microamps of leakage. But this is where my reason for putting the 
voltmeter at the supply side rather than on the cap side comes in. This reading is low enough that I suspect my multimeter might be drawing that current. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect one of the, I'll do the negative, the ground of the multimeter and see what happens. Boom. No leakage. 30 microamp leakage. No leakage. 30 microamp leakage. Right, so this cap is perfectly fine at 335 volts. And this reading is erroneous because of the current that the digital multimeter is drawing for its measurements. So we have to be very, very careful when we read this. Obviously, when I test uh, capacitors with this, I will not be using the digital multimeter. This is only for the purposes of uh, checking the uh, checking the, the actual accuracy. Um, I should actually do away with it now, but understanding that there's this fault, we're not actually throwing away caps at the moment, so I'm just uh, doing a demonstration of it. We know that this thing draws about 30 microamps. If I wanted to leave it in, then I would have to bear in mind that every time I get that kind of reading, part of that is, uh, is, it belongs to the, the, the fluke, uh, which is not a practical way of doing things. So when this multimeter is not in place, we won't have that problem. One thing to bear in mind right now is you've got 330 volts over here and over there. So you have to be very, very careful with this. And if you don't know what you're doing, then don't do it because you can get yourself killed. These are very low currents, but they do bite. Um, I know because I've had that experience. So you don't want to do that too often. And in fact, you don't want to do it at all. It hurts. So don't mess around with the stuff if you don't know what you're doing. All right. Disclaimer over once again. Now we'll go back through the ranges. And we should see the last one. That thing should short. So it's discharging and I reduce the voltage. Why did I not connect the short straight to ground? Well, the reason is I don't want to stress these caps. They're sitting at 330 volts. If I short them to ground, I'm basically going to create a spark. Um, these caps are not very big capacity, but they can still damage themselves if, they, uh, if, you, if you create a spark like that. Uh, let's do a, an electrolytic. Okay, here's an electrolytic, which is rated, this is 5 microfarads, rated at 70 to 80 volts. Could make up their mind. So I'm going to go maximum 70. And here you have to be very careful. You have to be respectful of the polarity. So here's the negative. That is at its minimum. That's in the short position. I'm going to put this in here. And I have to be careful I don't exceed my uh, 70 volt range. Now, I will also expect some kind of fluctuation every time I increase the voltage because it has the capacity to charge. So let me put that up there. You see that flick there that was charging. Now, every time I increase the voltage, well, it's not really visible on that range, but it actually is drawing a little bit every time I increase the voltage. So I'm going to go up to... 70 volts very carefully i don't want to blow it up by excess voltage it's now on 70 volts i read no leakage on the uh, 100 milliamp range no leakage on the 10 milliamp range there we go that's not good now i could leave this for a while and see if it actually reforms but it's moving far too slowly. It's dropping far too slowly. I don't think this one's actually going to reform. Well, maybe, maybe. It's actually now just under 100 microamps, so I can go there and watch it drop. If I leave it long enough, I, this is the wrong way to reform because I've actually gone straight to its limited vol limit voltage. If I wanted to reform it, I should drop the voltage and slowly increase it. So I should do, you see, when I do that, it's actually, the current's actually flowing back through the meter from the cap. Um, that diode I put in was actually in the wrong place. It should be here between here and the meter. All right, but 
it's slowly dropping this could possibly reform that's uh, something to try at a later date let me switch that off and if you look at the charge on there it's discharges down to zero pretty fast five microfarads not much so discharge is pretty fast so it's safe to handle and it is not warm but i would imagine if you leave it long enough it's not that much leakage current but uh, it's still something anyway here's that's the demo um, the last thing i want to do before i close this up and consider it a done thing well there are a few things i want to label it and all that but the last thing I want to do is check the calibration of this uh, micrometer reading. I, I need to check that um, the current that it reads here corresponds to the actual current flowing through the cap. So what I'm going to do in the next setup is I'm going to put a microammeter or an ammeter, probably the AVO, that goes down pretty, pretty low. It goes to 50 microamps. Uh, I'm going to put this in series. I'm going to connect this across it. And then because we've got that 12 kilo ohm resistor in series with the output, if I short this, I can then control the current flowing through the circuit with the voltage here. I'm not sure what the minimum would be because we've got 27 volts, we've got about 2 milliamps. So I won't be able to read the lower ranges, but to do that, I can put a some more resistors in series here. So that's the next step is to adjust those potentiometers at the back of the of that switch so that the reading we get here is accurate, at least accurate with my um, avometer, which is pretty accurate. All right, so I'm chuffed. This thing's working. Uh, one other thing that I forgot to mention is that the way this thing is set up, we actually increase the voltage in steps, uh, rather in a linear fashion, not in steps. Um, it does tend to make the the effect of this voltage on the on the capacitors a little bit more gentle because if you have a capacitor here and you start at 50 and then the next thing you do you go to 100 you're literally zapping it with something fairly close to its range this is a 125 so at 50 you might have nothing and at 100 you might actually get a, a complete short so with this thing going up slowly you actually control uh, visually what's going on within the leakage of the cap. The disadvantage of not having a stepped system is that if you're not careful, mind you, you could do the same with the stepped system, but if you're not careful, you can very easily exceed the voltage, the maximum rating of these caps, especially if they're under 330 volts. Now, most of the caps are either, you know, 600 or 630, or they're in the 125 range like this one. So, one has to be very careful that you don't think you're dealing with a 300 or 400 or 600 volt cap and just suddenly put that to maximum, this thing will blow up. Uh, so your leakage will be the least of your problems. Um, but anyway, that's, that's, that's brilliant. I'm, I'm very happy with that. Um, I'm looking forward to finalizing this by putting in the, uh, by doing the calibrations and then do all the labeling and, you know, all the extra little perks that one puts in there covering the sides of the piece of wood that I've had cut and painted already and end up with my working capacitance leakage tester. So we're ready to calibrate this now and uh, what I have is I have it on. I've got this on short. I've got the AVO on DC amps and at the moment it's set for 10 milliamps. When I switch this on, that'll be about 27 volts. There's a 12K resistor in series, which is the current limiting. So I expect, effectively, the ammeter is creating a short. So I expect about 2 point something milliamps. Uh, 2.2 or 2.3 milliamps or so. So we can calibrate the uh, 10 milliamp range. But let's start there first. All right. Here we go, 27 volts. We see zero volts there because effectively this is shorted, but I know the minimum voltage is uh, 27 volts or so. It's shorted through. And what I have there is 2.2 milliamps. Okay, I'm going to increase it say to, well, let's, let's check this on the 10 milliamp range. All right, 
The 10 milliamp range then is giving us, I can't go to the lower range, the 1 milliamp range, but the 10 milliamp range, I can increase the voltage here till I get a more readable value. I'm going to put it on the middle of the scale. So I'm reading exactly 5 milliamps on the other meter and I'm reading just under 5 milliamps on there. Now let me make sure I get the right one and adjust it ever so slightly. There we go, that's 5 milliamps. Now, if I take it to, say, 7 milliamps, 7 milliamps, 7 milliamps, that's good enough. All right. I can probably also then calibrate the 100 milliamp range. Now, I have to be careful with one thing. I can't take this over a certain current. And the reason is... The 12K resistor, which is acting as a short circuit protection, it's basically a short circuit to ground at the moment. It's a 2 watt resistor, um, 12K. If I work the power rating backwards, power equals current squared times R. And I've worked it out, and uh, the maximum current I should actually pass through is about 13 milliamps before this thing starts dissipating 2 watts. And I don't want to exceed it. So. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to calibrate the 100 milliamp range on 10 milliamps. That should be enough. Um, I'm never going to read much bigger values than that anyway. So I'll take this up to 10 milliamps on the AVO. And it's exactly at 10 milliamps at the moment. And I'm reading, well, I'm reading 12 over there. So that is a bit high. You know what, this is such a low resistance that I'm going to have to do it a different way. Well, that's no joy. I'll have to try it a different way. I'm still getting a higher reading than it should be. It's on 10 milliamps and it's reading 12. Okay, I'll have to play around with it outside and just do the resistance measurement rather than doing it like this. Now I want to do a 1 milliamp range. Let me take that down. To do a 1 milliamp range, I'm going to use, let's see, I have uh, 12K. So I'm going to use a bigger resistor that will reduce the current somewhat. Here's 100K, that might be too high, but we'll try it anyway. It just means we have to up the voltage a bit more. At the moment the voltage is at a minimum. So if I remove, I'm putting another resistor in series with the ammeter to reduce the current. Okay. So at the moment, I'm dropping this to 1 milliamp, I have 0.25 milliamps. So I can measure, I can adjust the 1 milliamp range. So 10 milliamps, 1 milliamp. 0.25, it's about there actually. Let me take this up to half. 0.5. It's bloody spot on. It's spot on. I'm not going to adjust anything. 0 0.7. Spot on. Okay. 0 0.7. There we go. So we're at uh, the 1 milliamp range. We're at 0 0.25. That's 250 micrograms. That's still too high to measure the 100 microamp range. But the 100 microamp is the zero resistance, so I don't have any adjustment to do. All right, other than the 100, um, 
milliamp range. I think I've got this pretty well calibrated. And I think this is done. I think it's ready to close it up and make sure I don't have any shorts on the inside. Um, make sure that anything that could short is protected. If you, if you see over here, there we'd have, have high voltage. There we'd have high voltage. So I'm going to put a bit of heat shrink on there just to ensure that it doesn't touch anything. At the moment, the way the, uh, the two halves fit, there shouldn't be any touching whatsoever, but I'm not taking any chances. So I'm going to protect that and then I'm ready to close it up. And here we have the finished product. The completed capacitance leakage meter or tester, power on off switch, power indicator, negative, positive, that's where you put the cap across, your voltage control from minimum to maximum. So this goes from about 27 volts to about 330 and the various positions of uh, the meter. So this is off and uh, in this position that is discharged to ground through a 47k resistor, 100 milliamp range, 10 milliamp range, 1 milliamp range, 100 microamp range. Everything is working great. The sides are on. A few feet on there so it stands properly. The back is clean and I think we're ready to go. Now I could have gone and uh, used decals or some other form of labeling, but I decided to do it the easy way. One does tend to get a bit bored with, uh, with the project and this happened to me. I just wanted to see this thing working. So uh, I did it the easy way. It's good enough for me. I can always do it again in the future when I'm more inspired. Now there's one other thing I need to do here and that is to ensure that my case and all these switchings, the switches and the, the pot are um, properly earthed. So to do that, this is an adapted plug that I have on here, waiting for a white one to connect in permanently. I'm going to test from the ground of the, or the ground, the earth connection on the plug to all the metal parts on here. Got the beeper on. Yep. Onto the switch. Yep. Onto the potentiometer. Perfect. Now I wanted this to be floating so if I test it to the ground on the test system I don't get continuity. So my entire case here is earthed to mains earth but the negative is floating so this voltage is completely floating relative to earth so i can test this in circuit by putting this ground anywhere lifting one leg of the cap and testing its voltage so that's it for now that's the result from the initial stages of uh, developing and designing the schematic to a working system and I am extremely, extremely happy with the result. Right, so, warning again, high voltages, be wary. The other thing is, this is the last of the four videos. So if you want to see the development, the design stage, uh, which arrived, which we, where we arrived at the schematic, go and see videos one, two, and three, or rather, two, three, and four. I decided to make this video one because I just wanted to get it um, done for anybody who wants to actually build one and doesn't want to go through the whole hoo-ha of designing it. There's a bit of maths, um, there's a lot of explanation involved. I do get uh, carried away with my explanations, but I enjoy it and um, I hope you do too. Right, see you next time.